Hey, everybody. Good morning, afternoon, I should say, and welcome to the DBIP Group Innovators Live Q&A, your daily intellectual property live cast with Amir and Victoria, bringing you guys awesome content around intellectual property from patents, trademarks, copyrights, to trade secrets, anything involving intellectual property. We want to just deliver high quality and useful and valuable content to all of our viewers. If you guys have specific questions about IP, send them to Victoria, Victoria to DBIP.com, Victoria to DBIP.com. Send her your questions or if you have ideas for future episodes that you want us to cover, just topics that can be general, shoot, shoot, them, shoot them her way. Also, we have a community number. Please join our text community by texting 415-943-5193, 415-943-5193. We'd love to have you join our text community. This is a Q&A show. Before we go into today's episode, I want to do a, just a quick recap on what we did on yesterday's episode. This is episode 111. Um, Victoria, what we, did we do on episode 110? Yesterday on episode 110, you talked about how you can protect your pencil company. Yeah, so we looked at Blackwing, um, iconic pencil maker, um, really, really distinctive uh, back-end eraser, and we saw how they were actually able to obtain trademark protection on that pencil, on the, on the, the basically the metallic clamp that holds the eraser. So really interesting stuff. Um, go back, check it out. It's possible to use trademarks to protect articles as long as the design features are distinctive and non-functional. So Victoria, what are we doing today on episode 111? Today, the question is how does Riddle, Riddle protect their football helmets with design patents? It's a French word, just say it in French. Oh, is it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm just, I'm teasing you, I'm teasing you. <laughs> so uh, NFL playoffs coming up. For those of you who are fans, hopefully your teams are in the run the playoffs. If not, you can always look to the draft next year. Um, but um, NFL, huge, and football's huge, obviously, in the U.S., and a lot of money is spent not just on intellectual property, of course, but on all aspects of the game. So since this is an IP show, we thought we would actually take a look at how Riedel protects their, um, their football helmets using design patents. Now, they actually have quite a few design patents on helmets. I'm just going to focus on 12 because I want to be super, super specific on football helmets. And I also want to show you guys an interesting progression just showing you how their design designs of helmets have changed and progressed throughout time. So let's get into it. So first things first, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you guys how you guys can go about doing this research and actually identifying design patents for other companies that you might be interested in or other industries. So to do this search, what you're going to want to do is, is you're going to want to go to um, USPTO.gov, I'm actually in the wrong site here, my apologies. And you're gonna to wanna to click on menu and then you're gonna to wanna to click on patents. And then you wanna click on patents home. Once you're on patents home, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down and click on search patents right here. And then you're gonna to wanna to scroll down to advanced patent search right here. So advanced search, searching full text patents. If you wanna search applications, you can scroll down and search for applications. But we're gonna focus on issued patents. Now in here, I'm going to go ahead and type the uh, the search code. So for this in particular, I'm going to focus just on design patents, and I'm going to focus on on football helmets. I, they do have other app, uh, design patents on other types of helmets, like baseball helmets. But just to narrow the scope of the show for this particular episode, I'm going to focus on just football. So I'm going to focus on um, so ACLM is the code for claim. So we're going to look only for patents that are design patents and that have the word football in the claim, and then I'm going to focus on those that were owned by Riedel. So this code AN stands for ASINI. Now, for those of you guys who are doing this for the very, very first time, if you guys are trying to follow along, if you guys for some reason don't understand what these codes are or are confused, um, you just scroll down and you'll actually see a description of what these codes are. So if you go down, you'll find that AN stands for ASINI name. So this is the owner of the patent. And if you're actually curious about some of these codes like APT, which is patent type, you can click on it and it'll actually take you and you'll see that four stands for design patent. Um, and then, yeah, and ACLM again, this is claim and that's right here, claims. So let's go ahead and do the search again. We're gonna use and, so we're gonna focus. This is gonna be a pretty narrow search. It's gonna return only 12 results. So I'm gonna hit search. And as you can see here, 12 results. So here are the 12 football helmets that have the word football in the claim and are owned by Riedel and our design patents. So what I did was is I just did the search before the show started just to save you guys some time. 
So I have them open here and I opened every single one of them. So you guys wouldn't have to worry about delay, delays for me trying to open and look at each one. So this is the very first one, 067. Um, but just going back, if you guys are unsure on how, how to do this yourself, you can just click right here. Click on the actual item and then click images. And then when you get to the images, you can click on full pages, okay? Full pages, once you're there, then you can scroll down and you can see. So this is the very, very first one. Um, I'm gonna close this window and I'm just gonna look at it here. So this is the very first one. Um, notice this is from 2002. And as you can see, this is the outer, outer shell of the helmet. Now, one thing that you'll note is that these dash lines here, so these are dash lines because um, they're not claiming the metallic mask part of the helmet as part of the design. They're just focusing on this, the, the shell of the helmet. And, and you'll see that if you read the, and this is the top down view of the helmet. So you can see it has these grooves. Now let's go up and read a little bit about this helmet. So one of the interesting things is, like I said before, the broken lines are of, are of the face mask and chin, chin guard straps, and they do not form part of the claim design. So it's only focusing on the helmet itself. Now, again, this is 2002. Let's go forward in time. So this, this patent here is um, 2006. Um, kind of interesting, because we can kind of see the differences between the two, right? So this one has slightly different design. Um, it looks a little wider. Um, I'll, I'm gonna just hand backwards real quick, just so you guys can see. So it looks a little different, right? Um, but also the top looks different, as you can see here. So the top, the design of the top looks a little different. Um, it looks like it has this, these design, this pattern on the top, on the back, um, that's different than what you saw before. So now again, this is, 2006, um, also owned by Regal. So let's go ahead and let's go forward in time a little more. So just, just, just so we're clear. So this is the older one, and then from 2002, and then we went forward to 2006. Now let's keep going forward in time. So this one is from 2016. So now we skipped several years, and you can see this is more probably the one that you're probably more familiar with and used to seeing. Um, now let's scroll down. Okay, this one is interesting because they're these dashed lines, they're not protecting these features as part of the helmet. So as you can see here, the boundary lines, the broken lines in figures one through six represent boundary lines and they're not claimed as part of the invention. So really it's just this design here, this groove here that is being protected. So kind of interesting. Again, right here too. You can see this this groove right here. This is the only feature that's really being protected in this design pad. You can see it nice and big in this particular figure right here. So all the dashed lines, those do not form part of the claim design, but they give they give what is being claimed context so you can understand what it is that they're protecting. So it's this grooved design on the front top of the helmet that is being protected by this design pad. Now, again, this is 2016. Let's go a little forward in time. So this is also 2016. Ah. But as you can see, okay, so what we're gonna be seeing here is we're gonna be seeing multiple design patents that are being filed to protect different aspects of the same helmet. So if you look over here, you see these side groups here, you'll probably note that they also um, exist here. You see the side groups here, um, but here they're actually being protected. So here are the side groups right here that are being protected. So this design patent is covering those side grooves that are on the side. This one is covering just the top, right? So this right here, you see it's dashed right here in this patent. And here, in this patent here, it's actually being protected. So again, you have one article, but you have multiple design patents that are being filed to protect that same article. Each design patent is protecting a different design feature of the article. So this patent protect the top groove. This patent here is protecting the side groove here that's on the upper right side and left side of the helmet. So very interesting. Now let's go forward in time. Um, this is, I'm not sure why it's lagging, but this is August of 2016. So a little later. Now this is the overall design, right? So really interesting. So we have in this particular design pattern, we're covering the entire, entire helmet design, but the prior two were focused on only specific design elements. In particular, it was focused on this side groove here and then this top groove right here. But this design patent here is covering the overall helmet. So pretty, pretty interesting. So you have one article, 
this is the helmet that most of you guys are probably familiar with um, that you see a lot of players using or variations of it. But, um, and again, this is 2016. So um, let's see let's see what other design patterns we, we find related to football helmets from Riedel. So this one here, this is 2017, again, again. Now, this is not only protecting the side roof here, but also this feature here. So this is sort of protecting the entire side feature that you see on the side of the helmet. And it's gonna protect both sides. So it's gonna be symmetrical, um, as you can see here. So you see both sides. Now, remember, all the dashed lines, they're not being protected. It's just the solid lines that are features that are being protected with this, this particular design pattern. So, and here's a top-down view. So you can see it extends all the way back towards the back part of the helmet right here and right here. So pretty interesting. Again, this, you can see the same feature right here, right? But here, this particular design pattern is covering all of it, the entirety of the design. So here you go. Here's the feature right here that wraps all the way around the back right here, right? Except this pattern is just protecting, just protecting these side features here. Let's take a look. This one's from November of 2017. Um, again, this is this looks a little li slightly different, um, but again, it's protecting the front um, and it's not protecting this part that curves back. So if I go back a couple, you can see there was this one here. Um, this was protecting the entire, this entire back part here that curves backwards. If you jump forward, this one's just stops right here. So it's it's almost like a sub feature that it's just focusing on just that sub feature. So super interesting. Um, let's take a look at another design patent. This is again, this is gonna be later. This is gonna be, oh, this is also November of 2017. Okay, so now this is protecting the side of the helmet, right? Not the top of the helmet, but the side of the helmet uh, that protects the side of the, fa the player's face. Now, as you can see here, um, again, this helmet, very, very similar to what we were seeing before, right? So, but but it's just focusing on a side feature. If you, if you go up and you scroll up, we can see this side piece right here. The side piece is the same as the side piece here, but this design pattern is focused exclusively on those side pieces. Um, and again, for those of you guys joining us late, we're just taking a look at Riedel's design patterns on football helmets, especially since the uh, NFL finals are coming up. So uh, let's keep moving forward. Um, we have three more to look at, it looks like. So this one here, this is, again, this is this is gonna be issued, this is issued after, um, let's take a look and see when. So this is January 22, 2019. So now we're getting later in time, um, very interesting looking helmet. And this one also uses dashed lines. Obviously this shows the face. And there you have it. So this is another helmet. And again, the dash lines, the face guard, this is not claimed as a feature of the mark, right? It's just the solid lines that are being claimed. So this looks like to me like they're claiming the sides that retain the face guard to the actual helmet, as you can see right here. So the side feature here that holds the face mask to the helmet. So let's see if they give that any explanation or indication of what that is. So um, again, they're, they, they don't say a whole lot, they don't say a whole lot, but as you can see, the dash lines form no part of the claim design. So this is strictly focused here on the side piece that clamps. It looks like the guard to the actual helmet itself. Oh, there's a good really correction on this one. Again, here it is. This feature here on the side of the helmet is what's actually being protected. Let's move on. This pattern here, see what date this this was issued in March of, of 2019 um, interesting so this one actually protects multiple features of the same uh, helmet but in one application so this is protecting multiple groups so the front groove on the top part of the side groove and then looks like the back so these are the design elements here that are all being protected by this design pattern the dash lines, again, form no part of the claim design. So it's this side feature here, here, and here, and also up top on the front, top front. Really, really interesting and fascinating to see how they go about using design patterns to protect their helmets. As you can see, although this helmet looks 
very, very similar to all the prior ones, it was still the subject of multiple design patents. So if you guys have the budget, using design patents is a really, really useful way to broadly and powerfully protect your goods that you put out in the market, especially if they have distinctive designs. And again, this one's protecting the dashed lines form no part of the claim design. Very interesting. Any shading is just to show, is this for illustration? So let's go down, take a look. Um, as you guys can see, again, they're also protecting these clamps here that hold the face guard to the helmet itself. And also this front piece right here, this front little plate on the front. And again, obviously the face, the helmet, the actual guard, those are all gonna be in dashed lines. And note, note that they're not protecting the bottom clamp, only the top, only the top clamp. So that's kind of interesting. Um, very similar to what we saw here, right here. Also where they protect the top clamp and not the bottom. And then let's look at the very last one that we that we have for today's show. So this one, this one issued again after the prior ones. This is August 13th of 2019. Um, and this is just protecting the front plate feature here. As you can see, this is the front plate feature um, and it's focused entirely on that feature. Right here, you can see it nice and prominently. Again, dash lines, those aren't part, part of the claim design. It's just this front plate feature here. So again, I, thought, I hope you guys found this episode helpful. The reason why I particularly like this episode is because it really is emblematic of, of filing multiple design patents on a single article, but focusing each design patent on different aspects of that same article, right? Because by themselves, each one, each one covers a distinctive aspect of a design that's featured on a good. And it's also interesting because they did file one design patent that covered the good in its entirety. So really, really useful. Hopefully you guys find this episode useful. And if you guys ha put articles of goods out there that have distinctive designs, you might consider if you guys have the budget filing multiple design patents on different design aspects of the good itself. Uh, design patents are really, really powerful and a really, really useful way of protecting your, your inventions. And what's cool about them is that they tend to issue much more quickly than utility patents. That's not always the case, but more often than not, it's the case that you can get design patents more quickly. So. Hope you guys found this this episode helpful. This was episode 111. If you guys have ideas for future episodes or if you have questions, please send them to Victoria at victoria to dbip.com. Also, we have a community number. So if you would, please text our community at 415-943-5193, 415-943-5193. We would love to have you as part of our text community. If you text that number, you'll have direct access to me. You can send me your questions. I'll do my best to answer your questions. And if you guys have ideas for shows, again, just send them my way and we'll make sure that we feature an episode on the topic that you want covered. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow for episode number 112. Thank you.